This video gives an introduction to robust optimization. In many real life problems, the exact parameters are not known. Perhaps the parameters are stochastic, for example, following the normal distribution, or perhaps the true parameters are just not known at the stage of modeling and will not be known for sure until a solution is implemented in practice. A simple approach is to use the average or estimated parameters in the model and hope that these won't be too far from the actual parameters seen in practice. This, however, can have the effect that solutions that were feasible at the time of modeling will no longer be feasible at the time of implementation. For some problems that might be just fine, maybe the solution can be changed slightly to satisfy the new parameters, or maybe the constraints do not have to be satisfied completely. But for other problems, it might be absolutely critical that a feasible solution is found. Robust optimization solves this by solving a model using the most pessimistic guess on the parameters. Since the parameters in practice will always be less restrictive than those used in the model, a feasible solution to the model will be feasible in practice as well. To give you an example of where robust optimization might be relevant in practice, let's consider the construction of a building. The building has to be able to withstand various forces. Maybe the building is very tall and the wind might be an important factor. Or maybe the building is to be built in a cold place where the roof has to be able to carry the extra weight of snow. In either case, we do not know for sure how strong the winds will be or how much snow we can expect. These parameters can change a lot. A robust solution will take the most extreme cases into account and make sure that the buildings will sustain their environments. It might not be specified anywhere in the contract that this request must be satisfied, but it is still a good idea to try to maximize the happiness of your employees, and hence the school decides to consider this a soft constraint that should be satisfied as much as possible when scheduling the lectures. Hard constraints, on the other hand, are constraints that must be satisfied. We already talked about an example of this with the building construction before. Robust optimization provides a way of dealing with hard constraints specifically. So how does it work? Before we delve more into robust optimization, we should understand the differences between soft and hard constraints. Soft constraints are constraints that do not necessarily have to be satisfied. Either the constraints can be violated slightly without any issues, or perhaps the constraints simply model something that would be nice to respect but does not necessarily need to be respected for a solution to be feasible. As an example, consider a school that needs to schedule the lectures of its teachers. One teacher might ask to get all their lectures early in the day so that they can leave before 15.00 in the afternoon and pick up their grandkids from another school. It might not be specified anywhere in their contract that this request must be satisfied, but it is still a good idea to try to maximize the happiness of your employees and hence the school decides to consider this a soft constraint that should be satisfied as much as possible when scheduling the lectures. Hard constraints, on the other hand, are constraints that must be satisfied. We already talked about an example of this with the building construction before. Robust optimization provides a way of dealing with hard constraints specifically. So how does it work? The basic idea is to use the worst possible, meaning the most restrictive estimate of the parameters when it comes to the constraints. So let's say that we have a less than or equal constraint like this one. A1x1 plus A2x2 has to be less than or equal to B. In this case, we should choose the highest possible value of A1 and A2 and the lowest value of B, as this will limit the variables the most. Any solution that satisfies this version of the constraint will also satisfy the constraint with any other possible values of the parameters. Naturally, if the constraint was a greater than or equal to constraint, we have to pick the minimal value of A1 and A2 and the maximal value of B. Robust optimization does not handle equality constraints. Typically, what we have is a range of possible values for each of the parameters as seen for A1 here. A1 can in this case take any value between A1 min and A1 max. The most important assumption for robust optimization is that the values of each parameter are independent. 
each parameter can take any values in their ranges independent of the values of the other parameters. Now by choosing the parameters to use in the model according to the worst case, we make sure that a feasible solution to the model will also always be feasible in real life when the true value of the parameters will be known. Robust optimization can also be used to analyze the objective function. Here the idea is to give the most conservative guess on the optimal objective value. If we for example want to minimize this objective with these ranges for the parameters c1 and c2, we would choose to use c1 max and c2 max to get the most conservative guess on the objective value. If we wanted to maximize the objective, we would of course use c1 min and c2 min. When these two ideas are combined in the robust optimization, we look at the worst case concerning both the objective and the constraints. Hence, the solution that we find by solving the model will always be feasible in practice and will give a bound on what we expect from the objective function. Definitely, the objective value will always be better than or as good as this in practice. Robust optimization has a number of weaknesses, some of which we have mentioned before. First of all, the parameters must be independent. Secondly, the method cannot handle equality constraints. Thirdly, it might be hard to estimate the minimum and maximum value of a parameter. For example, if the parameter follows a normal distribution as the one shown here. The normal distribution has no natural bounds. It just goes on forever in both directions. So you cannot say for certain what the minimum and maximum value should be. Finally, and most impactful probably, the method is extremely conservative. When you know what the minimum and maximum values of each parameter are, robust optimization will give you the solution to the absolute worst situation possible. In practice, often it is extremely unlikely that all parameters will take on their worst case values and hence the solution you get by using robust optimization might have very little relevance when compared to the optimal solution in practice. This can especially be the case when the ranges of the parameters are wide. We conclude this video by looking at an example. On the left we have a simple linear program which has this optimal solution. Let's now say that we are in fact unsure about the parameters in the program. In the middle here you see an algebraic representation of the program. And here on the right the ranges of the parameters are given. Since the objective is to maximize c1x1 plus c2x2, we should choose c1 and x2 as small as possible to be conservative. The first constraint is a greater than or equal to constraint, meaning that we should choose the coefficients on the left hand side as small as possible and the right hand side as large as possible. The chosen values are shown in bold. Finally, the two remaining constraints are less than or equal to constraints and hence should be handled the opposite way of the first constraint. We can now solve the problem using the highlighted values of each parameter. The optimal solution to this problem is x1 equal to 7 and x2 equal to 0. The optimal objective value is 28 fifths, which is equal to 5.6. This is quite a lot lower than the expected value of 9 that we had before. Furthermore, the basis variables are different. Looking at this example, a new weakness of robust optimization appears. If a problem has both less than and greater than or equal to constraints like this one, it could actually happen that there is no feasible solution to the robust problem. The problem simply becomes too constrained when using the most extreme values for all parameters. This is almost the case for the example at hand. The first constraint essentially says that x1 must be greater than or equal to 7. If x2 is set to 0, the last constraint says that x1 must be less than or equal to 7. Hence, x1 equal to 7 and x2 equal to 0 is the only feasible solution. And if either a11, b1, a31 or b3 had wider intervals, the problem would no longer be feasible. Calling this a weakness might be wrong, but it is at least something one should be aware of when using this method.